Hey guys, we're back with another episode of Eskimo Joe and the Icelandic Frontiers. <laughs> okay, but no, seriously, uh, I'm just the guys with the Hyperloops, and this is me in my I get cold, so I don't want to be cold get up. I am bundled up, like I'm sitting in below freezing temperatures. And you know what? It may or may not be below freezing. Uh, but apparently my car thermostat thing says it's 26 degrees. So, over bundled? Maybe. But you know what? I don't want to be sick. What else? Anyways, so uh, it's been a long time since I've done one of my vlogs. Uh, I don't know why I really stopped. Maybe it was the weather, rain, people complaining about noise, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, no, me sitting at my computer doing one of these, not happening. Anyways, so I guess what we'll kind of talk about, and I haven't paid a bunch of attention to it, uh, is the the EAW meta is kind of, we don't really know whether it's ending or not ending. Um, the dilemma is, is that Legacies has a minor wave release on the 11th of January, so about, what, two days? Um, that's for the United States, uh, for any of our... Uh, people's watching from other countries um, some of you guys may have it some of you guys may not have it for months I guess because some of you guys still don't even have EAW I guess but anyways um, so okay hold on this thing's guys trying to go in front of me I, I don't know what's going on because this crazy people um, yeah um, I had a little bit of snow on the ground everyone goes a little bit crazy uh, we don't even have snow anymore. Like, it snowed, whatever. On, on the ground, there's, like, maybe, like, a foot and a half. But the, the, the highway doesn't have jack. We have a bunch of salt. Anyways, um, I'm going to say anime is a bunch of times today because I think that's the word of the book today. Uh, where were we at? Um, meta. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we really don't know where the, the, the meta kind of, like, sits. Like, a lot of people are all about the whole Legacies meta. Um, and we're kind of just waiting for it to drop, and there's regionals coming around. Uh, I think the earliest one is the 13th, which, let's see, today, if today's the 9th, so 11th is, what is today's date? Alright, today's the 8th, so that makes more sense now. So the 13th would be Saturday, so if Saturday would make Legacy is legal, and the, the quote-unquote drop is Thursday, the 11th. That's kind of obscene. Um, one, because uh, a, a normal player wouldn't have any sort of testing there. So you'd be going into a, a you know, a, a theoretical major type event with very little play testing done on newer decks. So a lot of people would be playing older, older decks in general. Uh, you'd have a bunch of people who don't have the cards, except for the people who have the money to just kind of throw at it or have ordered, you know, from overseas online, blah, blah, blah. So from my understanding, uh, FFG had said that Legacies is not legal um, until it actually uh, releases in its entirety. And that's kind of a whole nother story to talk about. But allegedly, and this is allegedly because I, I, I don't know where to see some of this stuff, um, but someone that I would say is very reputable. Uh, had stated that the event could kind of make their mind on it, provided that they had, um, so like, the, the long story short, if someone had Legacies available for purchase, like a lot of it, not like, oh, I have a box, Legacies going to be legal, let me sell this box for $1,000, um, then they could decide that Legacies would be legal for the event, because it's from the... It, it's not from Premier. So, like, Premier is pretty much Nationals and above. And Regionals and below is, is like, relaxed or whatever the heck the format is. Where they kind of don't really care. Like when stuff gets released, it becomes legal immediately. So, if stuff gets released two days before the event, in theory, then it would have been legal. Um, but there's a bunch of upcry. Um, or outcries. I don't know what the word is for that. Um, in general, about that. Um, I don't think it would make sense or even be fair to do that to people. Um, I think the 11-day thing makes the, the most realistic amount of sense where when a set drops, it's uh, pretty much 11 days uh, to, to make it legal because they, they pretty much drop on a Thursday. And what they say is, is that it's going to be uh, the second Monday after it drops. 
So since they drop on Thursdays, it's always 11 days for it to be after. So you'll get you'll get essentially two weekends: the weekend that it came out, and then the weekend after to try to recover, to to you know grab cards and whatnot, get testing and blah blah blah. Now, in general, uh, anyone that understands what TTS is, tabletop simulator, shh, um, greatest secret ever. We've had legacies on there for at least a few days, maybe about a week now. Um, so there's a lot of people already going gung-ho with new testing and all sorts of different stuff. And they're going to be way ahead of the curve as far as like what decks to play, what stuff like doesn't, like doesn't work. Not necessarily what's the best, but what doesn't work. What kind of works, what works, yada, yada, yada. So um, you've seen us. Or have you seen our video with like Obi Maz uh, in general? And then uh, for the early viewers of this video, you should see uh, Tarkin Seventh uh, going out today. And uh, for anyone else, this video probably comes up tomorrow. So being tomorrow it would mean yesterday, you would have seen an article about Tarkin Seventh um, with some gameplay. Uh, and I believe it was, I was using Obi Maz. So, uh, some new gameplay to try to, you know, wrap your heads around and check stuff into. But, uh, in general, so, this shit's just a mess. Uh, like, we don't really know what stuff's gonna be, uh, legacies-wise, EAW, whatever. You kinda gotta get testing in, but you don't have access to the cards, so... If you're playing in real only, you probably need to make proxies. And get the games in, and have your core group, like, hustling if you're trying to get this regional, and take it down. Um, online-wise... It's much easier for us. Uh, you just build the deck in there and just go get tons and tons of games in. Um, also, we have Season 4 of the Artificery League wrapping up. So today they should they just announced uh, the top cut, which I want to say was like 68 people made the top cut. So from there, uh, I don't know if the plan is to give buys to the people who went 8-0. I did, thank you. Um... No games of R2P2. I didn't play it. But, um... I played Rainbow Five, so it's kind of like... Eh, there's no real merit there. Anyways, um... So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what their plan is. Like, maybe people drop, so then they'll end up having 64 or less than 64. If not, we'll, we'll kind of just find out what their intent is or what they're going to do. Um, so, go from there. But we're going to have to lock in deck lists soon for that as well. And, like always, it kind of seems like every season is this not three month long endeavor, but it kind of just happens where uh, the, the meta changes. So it seems like we get a new set, whatever happens, we're playing with it. And then we get the RRG errata, whatever, a month and a half later. And so like one of those two things happens. We either get brand new set and have to make a deck list or we're getting like rules changes and have to make a deck list. So if you can see any of those play out, um, you know anybody in there, Getting information from them could be very helpful um, if you're trying to go into one of these regionals that's going to be legacy legal because our online event is going to be legacy and rivals legal, so keep that in mind. Um, so we'll kind of just see where this all takes us, but I feel pretty bad for anyone that is going to go into an event on the 13th and if the regional decided that legacy is going to be legal because allegedly they're getting you know a, a, a big shipment of, of boxes and whatnot. Because that's kind of kind of rough. Like, I prefer that type because, one, I play online in general. Um, and two, I tend to be ahead of the curve. So I can go try to put Obi Maz. You're going to have people doing the Tarkin 7 thing. And, like, other people might be playing, like, Random Jank. And I don't know. We'll kind of find out. Like, uh, if you've seen my Ayla or Elite Ayla, Elite Rose, Rookie Pilot deck, you've seen me play the 5 die hero vehicle thing. Um, and, and no, I don't play five drops, but I, I like it. I like it a lot. I could go play that in a tournament if I felt like it. So like, wh where do you go? Um, do you sit there and play old decks? Do you like, do you, do you try to just whip out Sabine Ezra or 2P2? Cause then you're, you could be playing against new cards, not even know what the hell's going on. Um, and you know, unbreakable. Oh my God. What's that? And it's just like, oh, I have like three shields. Like I'll eat that like old day. I don't know. Anyways. So. We'll kind of see where that takes us, um, but the big thing is getting prepared right now. So I would expect any event to be that's on the 13th to just be EAW, 
So, um, I'd pretty much say prep yourself for the R2P2s. Um, there is... There's a deck I kind of ran into uh, a while ago. People hyped it up, but it... The, 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 the breakdown of it I thought was kind of crappy. Um, I liked the concept, so I made the adjustments to be, I feel, a better combo variation. Um, spoke with the guy who was, was trying to, you know, pilot it, and uh, we've been seeing pretty good results versus R2P2, so it may be possible that that could be a better version, um, which is realistically just like the seventh OTK deck, but it, there's there's been like no testing on it, so you gotta understand that like R2P2's had, what, months at this rate? Or at least a month of people tweaking and testing and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, a lot of different meta decks have fallen off the wayside. Um, so it's, it's, it could have a completely horrifying matchup somewhere. Um, and we would have no idea. We wouldn't know how to play every single matchup. Could sit there and run into like hired gun, hired gun, rookie pilot, rookie pilot, and be a mess. Which I also heard had a good matchup versus R2P2. But it's... The way I would say this is this. If you hear things, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, and I don't mean the salt that you get from all these internet people when they roll bad. Because that's just like, a, that's a whole different kind of salt. But, um, the, there could very well be a deck that's very good versus R2P2. But you, you really can't take huge merit in beating uh, most players. Like... If you're playing it's an R2P2 guy that doesn't even know that C3PO can resolve, you know, like, pose base 2 to then go flip, you know, raise, um, raise die and an ancient die to a 2 and a 3 to then get 5 after their opponent claimed, like, it's just like, well, you didn't even rationalize that these options were available to you, um, so you're kind of just, just missing key points of the game and you're playing a different game from some of the other players. And, like, it, the way I would say it is, is that the people that seem to be winning um, events more often than not are the ones that know how to play better in general. So, sure, they might be playing with R2P2 and uh, winning with it, and you're seeing, like, R2P2 win, win after win. But a lot of time it's just that the, the better players with the best deck is going to win a exponentially larger amount of the time. And it's just because they'll know small stuff like that. Or, oh, wait, my opponent has, you know, two cards left in their deck. And they're re-rolling trying to kill my my Poe. And my Ray is still, like, fully healthy. Let me uh, use this C-3PO to take this Poe 2 or Ray 2 and turn this into 2 discard to hit their hand. <clears throat> so now they end up, like, killing Poe or whatever. They go to the next round. And now they're realizing they only have two cards left. All of a sudden, any of those two damage sides with C-3PO is ending the game. And now what do you do? Nothing. Or it sets them in a position where now they're just looping their one Ancient over and over. So they're kind of having to, to roll into max damage, but you've got Shoto's giving you shields and your activation pings. And now you're hitting them for 4, 5, 6, 7. And then they're they're, they're not getting through your, your, your defense. They, they hit you for like 3 or 4, you field medic. And th then you go to the next round and you kill them. So it's uh, R2P2 is very good. Um, if you're going to an EAW uh, event and it's pretty much necessary to win, and you want to win, you are probably best bets playing R2P2. But you do have to learn how to play it very well, and you have to realize that mirrors are going to come down to um, a play skill level differentials and be uh, kind of like teched out differences. Like, sure, there's obviously going to be luck where if some dude's rolling out round one Ray and it's hitting two base, two base, plus three Ancient, sure, you don't have like a sound alarm, you probably lost. But, or like a Force Misdirection, because if you Force Misdirect, there you're godly. But, um, like, it's going to happen. So, like, try to increase your play skill level and it'll help immensely in those situations. If not, you're you're kind of fated to lose. And if you have uh, a much worse deck, um, then it, it's probably just even lower odds because R2P2 is very good at, at, at kind of blocking and just getting their damage in every round. They, they're not the deck that hits you for that 10-round that one 
the other deck that hits you for like three or four and puts up a solid defense, then does it again. And when you try to shield up, they just light bow it all the way. So they, they, they just continually get their damage in and protect their guys very well. And it, they just bury you in, in massive amounts of small attrition. Like, if you activate Shoto three times with Ray, you've gained three health, essentially, and you've dealt three damage. Like, that's the thing you have to understand about that deck. Like, Ray is actually a key part. If you could smash Ray off the table by round two, which is kind of near impossible at times, um, Poe can maximize his damage, but it's a bit harder for him um, via, like, actual mitigation because he, he's more reliant on his upgrades. Because if he uses his focus side, okay, if he uses focus or special, he's getting a shield and then like adjusting things. But you could eat whatever big damage die. So now he's down to like whatever's left, two or four. Um, and that's a bit more manageable. The problem is like actually trying to kill Ray through a Shoto in like Ancient is is so ridiculous that it's, it's crazy. Because you're going to have, like, the Shoto. So, like, I'd say, what, maybe two shields via Shoto. You'll have Ancient go on the bottom to Healer for two. That's not counting any Fuel Medics or Honor Guards trying to stop your damage. So, like, it's, most people go after Poe. And then they try to deal with Ray after, hoping that they can get, like, a 2v1 situation and take her out. So, like, it, th th there's no easy way of beating the deck. And that's not going to change until, like, Legacies really comes out. Um, the seventh OTK, I was playing against it. I was having pretty good time, but it doesn't mean that everyone would. And the seventh OTK, de seventh OTK deck, one, we don't know how the other matches look, and two, it's not necessarily the easiest to play because there's a there's a lot of mind games going back and forth and, and dodging around uh, removal and whatnot. So, who knows? Um, now. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, so so like the whole legacies thing um, is going to be interesting. And we'll kind of see where it takes us. Uh, anytime there's a new format, there's always a bunch of new decks. People want to play. Tarkin looks good. Um, I think Finn is not great right now. But he could be set up for greatness uh, at some point. His modified side is kind of what's holding him back. But the plus two is much better than, I think, a base one. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, if that Finn's die was like one base range, two base ranged... Uh, three indirect, and then the, the like the willpower special. Um, you'd resolve that one base more often than not. Like there will be times where that one base is huge, but I don't mind re-rolling it to try to get two, three, or a willpower, which is representative of two. Then trying to to resolve a, a regular one, which a lot of people tend to do, and that kind of causes problems for themselves. So we'll kind of see where Finn is. Um, my compadre Bobby Sapphire put Finn in the, the, the poop pile for uh, Legacy Legends, and I wouldn't say it's rightfully so, but it makes sense, just because the his pairing is kind of tough. Um, we don't have a very good 14-point, uh, like, ranged pairing. Like, sure, you could put him... Th there's all sorts of great pairings. You could put him with Cannon and Ayla. Um, you could do, like, Maz tricks and different stuff, but, like, th those are not amazing you kind of want like pretty much you want cannon stats on like a ranged guy and you can't pair him with two guys unless you pair him with like an Ezra and a rookie pilot or something so like that's not very good either like but th there's different options available we'll kind of see what's what where it's you know taking us um and go from there uh what else is coming up in this thing um uh we are well aware of all the blue crazy legends so you know yoda OB, um, Maul is going to be the harder one to kind of, uh, put together. So, like, I think the theory is, is that when Rivals becomes legal, um, the whole Maul Anakin will be nice. Um, but right now we're looking for, at 14-point pairings, as, uh, Elites with Phasma, Elite with Aphra, um, Seventh Sister, and, like, Seventh Sister would make the most realistic sense from, a um, from that perspective, because you're gonna have five dice, you're gonna, um, you're gonna have okay damage sides, they're not the greatest, because the seventh die itself is not amazing, but, uh, it, it's serviceable, it's, it's kind of old school, but on a 14 point character that comes with an additional utility die, like, you can't complain about that, um, it's just Maul's die is pretty janky at times, but it, it pairs well with the, the utility of the, the, the ID9 die from the seventh ability, 
because we're looking at a disrupt and a discard side. I think that's what it is. I might be wrong on them all. But um, I don't really want to resolve those sides. I only want two, three for a resource or a resource. And if you have no resource, you're really just looking at the two damage side and the resource side that you want, which can be all too problematic. But his ability is kind of bonkers if people go back to the, the heavy mitigation format. Um, like against R2P2, R2P2 doesn't usually mitigate nearly as much. Um, they shield up and they heal. Um, like, sure, you'll get guarded or misdirection sometimes, but in most situations, more than not, it's it's just, like, defensive via shielding and heals. So his, 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 uh, his counter-removal ability won't be as amazing there. Um, but who knows? We'll kind of see it as we go. Um, let me think. What else do we got? Like, outside of the obvious, like, upgrade setups, so, like, OB, Saber, um... I think Rose is very good, right, but Rose is not a legend. She's a rare. Never mind. Um, Ale is like the legendless legend. If she was a legend, she'd be so much money. It'd be ridiculous. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of most of the other legends, uh, but I don't really care for most of them. I, I'd say like most of the yellow ones are going to end up being kind of janky. Uh, Saw's, Saw looks interesting. Um, but it, it's back to one of those points where, like, a 16, the 16-point 16 character for Hero doesn't have very good 14-point pairings still. Um, like, we have plenty of great 12-point pairings, but there's usually, a, like, a differential there. So, like, I guess if you went, like, Saw... See, the problem is this. Saw Ayla, Ayla only affects blue and red dice for yourself. So then you can't really pair her with the yellow pairings. Like, going with Zeb is just like, oh, I can't touch his die. Why do I, well, like, the, you're losing a bunch of the power of her special when you do that. Um, Zeb, Saw, like, they all have the second chance thing going, so there, there could always be something super relevant there. It's just that they, they have innate dilemmas of, of team pairings, like, Cannon's good, uh, old school Ray, uh, is good with Zeb, um, not with Saw, though. Then you've got, like, like, you know, trying to run Hera and random cool stuff. Like, th there's... They're interesting enough where they're not like Awakenings one Finn that was just so bad that even when people try to run him and be cute, it just it just didn't do anything. Like Zebs and Saws can actually hit really hard. So even if they're just inferior decks, you could probably come away with wins when you're smashing twos and threes down someone's throat for sixteen points. Or sixteen slash seventeen points, because Zeb's seventeen. So, uh, we'll see how that goes, but you guys need to definitely get lots of legacies testing in if you're looking to go to one of those regionals, because you want to try to filter out some of those commons and uncommons from the new set, and see if it improves, you know, your deck. Like, even if your pairing ends up being not the greatest, or some of the cards in the deck aren't, but if you can narrow down some of those amazing commons and uncommons, um, and your opponents don't end up having, the, like, the... The, the increased proficiency or efficiency from them, like, you can just set yourself way ahead. Uh, but, we'll kind of just see where that goes with it. Um, I don't remember half of what I'm saying anymore. Just trying to talk for you guys. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll, we'll see how this stuff goes. The whole Legacies thing is going to be super screwy. I don't know what the hell FFG is doing with this leg. Here's some stuff on the 11th, but we're going to say it's not out yet. Like, my in, in theory, in theory, this entire thing could have just been based on they wanted to get it out. Um, but then they didn't want it to to kind of ruin the regionals thing because they called the regionals the other format stuff. So then, because they also just couldn't get enough out in general, they wanted to just call it like an initial wave. And it just causes like ginormous messes at times. Because, what was it? Like the whole... Awakenings SOR thing at the beginning, prices were insane because it was hard to get packs and boxes. So now if they're making a quote-unquote limited release, what the hell is different from just saying you have a short first wave? Yeah, the only thing is the, the legality behind it. Like, or not legal in general, just the play legal. So it's just like, what the hell? Like, is, is this just some, like, master plot? Because the secondary market's probably going to go crazy right now. Um, if any of the, the regional, so like, let's say the regional for the, 
20th says Legacies is legal because there's they have you know 12 boxes or whatever the hell it is, then we're going to see a huge spike in prices for any people going to those events, um, or at least those people have to search. But I, I like in theory, we also don't have a bunch of 50 player events. We're looking at like 17 player regionals and 30 and 40 player regionals at times. So it may not be too bad, but imagine if this was like Worlds or something, um, and this is, you know, two weeks before, like the prices would be kind of obscene. And if you look at the time frame we're looking at, we just got, we got this stuff January 11th. So if we get a set once every four months, which would be three releases a year, um, which in theory would make sense, we're looking at around the same time as Worlds. So maybe they try to stagger it a bit so that they can release at Worlds without it being legal for Worlds. And this is like that ploy. I don't know. Um, not here to really think about conspiracy theories, but trying to make sense of everything sometimes kind of just puts you there. Uh, but we'll see how this stuff goes. And I don't know. I hope anything I said in here was kind of helpful or just, I don't know. I don't even know whatever I would have said anything helpful. You guys tell me. You tell me what's wrong with this stuff, what you'd like to kind of hear and see. Um, just keep in mind that a lot of my deck list type stuff and different things uh, are tend to be like Patreon exclusive. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys to join. Join! Um, shh, I lied. Okay, I lied. Yeah, join Patreon. Because love me long time. Um, I don't know, but... Uh, in general, a lot of outcry for R2P2. Uh, the format will change. I think it'll probably it'll still probably be good. I just think the damage from the indirect stuff's um, getting pretty high, so you can kind of see where stuff's going to be going much more easily. Um, and the decks, because there's going to be a bunch of different stuff, R2P2 is going to have to like appropriate because uh, it looks to be some 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 mill decks coming out, and I don't know if R2P2 can handle. Uh, heavy ramp into like multiple big upgrades um because like let's say you get like Qui-Gon Yoda you know shoving down like a Shoto in a, an ancient round one or something then it could be problematic for them especially if their damage is getting like blocked out and they may have to start going back to like lightsaber pulls to find uh light bows because right now they're right now they're kind of just like natural drawing stuff which is weird because it, it, it's a reduced efficiency when they can't sit there and just go, oh, I have my Ancient, oh, I have my Shoto, oh, I have my Lipo. Um, and, but, like, they have binds to make stuff cheaper, so we'll just kind of see where this takes us, I guess. Um, but thanks for watching, listening. Uh, you guys have a great day. Let me know how it goes. I had the heater down on one. I'd assume you can't hear it. Uh, no wipers, no nothing. So let me know how it was. You guys have a great one. Deuces. Hyperloop out.